Polar aligning can be a tedious task that can leave someone just learning this hobby feeling defeated and pack away their equipment and not feel motivated to get out there and image our beautiful universe. But it doesn't have to be that way. There are programs out there that can make polar aligning easy, such as ASI Air and SharpCat, both of which do an amazing job, but they are restricted to the field of view and the portion of the sky that you can polar align in. But what if you have obstacles in the way that you can't get to that portion of the sky? Or what if you don't have the means to go buy a focal extender or reducer to meet the field of view requirements? Also, what if, like me, you have a ton of light pollution in the north and you can't even see Polaris, which leaves using a polar scope out of the question? That's where Nina's three-point polar alignment comes in. It is a super easy, super fast way to polar align, and you're not limited to field of view or the portion of the sky to polar align in. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And if you saw my original uh, polar alignment video, first I wanted to thank everyone for their support on this channel so far. And also I wanted to thank everyone for their feedback. I had a uh, pattern of questions regarding that video. And like I've always said, if I don't explain something well enough, or if you have any questions at all, just ask. I'm more than happy to reword. I'm more than happy to answer questions. And in cases like this, I'm more than happy to even remake the entire video. So without further ado, let's jump on in and let's talk about Nina's three-point polar alignment. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. We've covered a lot so far on this channel and we're nowhere near done. So let's hop on over and learn about polar alignment. Polar aligning is the process of facing your mount head towards the north celestial pole if you're in the northern hemisphere and south celestial pole if you're in the southern hemisphere. If you take a look at this diagram, you can see what I mean by the celestial pole. And following this arrow, you'll see the rotation of the earth around the pole. Now, if you do not have your mount facing the pole, think of a wobbly top. Take a look at this angle and you'll quickly see that if you're not facing the pole, it'll actually bring you around in a circle around the pole, causing a heavy drift. Here's an example of a drift, and we're using one second uh, exposures on a loop, and we are tracking in sidereal right now. And uh, you can see, even after one second, how much those stars move. Now, in this little clip, you can see we're tracking in sidereal, and we are polar aligned here, and you can see that the stars are perfectly still. Now, that is how it needs to be in order to get the exposures that you need. So a couple of common questions that I got from my original polar alignment video were, what do you mean that your polar alignment starts with your tripod? And why do you set your tripod to 354 degrees? And that's exactly what I'm going to demonstrate here. Now, it's important to uh, understand that magnetic north is not the same as the North Celestial Pole, just like Magnetic South is not the same as the South Celestial Pole. They are different, and they can be up to several degrees away from each other. Now, from here on out, everything that I demonstrate is going to be from the Northern Hemisphere, and all of these concepts will work in the uh, Southern Hemisphere. Just replace North with South. Now, take a look at this picture here. You'll see a nub at the top of the tripod, and that nub needs to face north if you're in the northern hemisphere or south if you're in the southern hemisphere. Now, let's pretend that this is at due north. That nub is at zero degrees magnetic north. The mount is lined up with the tripod, so the mount is also at zero degrees magnetic north. Now, take a look at the azimuth adjustment knobs. You'll see you only have so much room to play with when you're adjusting. Now, being that magnetic north is not the same as the north celestial pole, what you'll find is that when you're polar aligning, your mount 
could be somewhere around this position. If your tripod is at zero degrees magnetic north, your mount head might be in this position here to reach polar alignment. And what you'll notice is you very quickly run out of adjustment room on your azimuth adjustment knob. Okay. So what you do, and some mounts have even shorter azimuth adjustment knobs, and you run out of adjustment entirely before you can even get polar aligned. Ask me how I know that. So what I would have to do is essentially pick up my entire setup, rotate it, and start polar alignment over again. Now, take a look at this picture really quick. What you'll see is that my iPhone, that nub is centered at the top of the phone. And then the rear tripod leg is centered at the bottom of the phone. Now you don't need to use an iPhone for this. You can use essentially any phone that will sit flat on a surface and either has a compass or has the ability to have a compass downloaded or you can just use a generic compass. Just make sure whatever you're using, you're able to set consistently in the same position. Now, what I found on my setup, and this is gonna be personal to you, it's gonna be dependent on how accurate your compass is, but when I would have to shift my tripod, when I was taking everything apart to put away, and I got down to the bare tripod, I would take a measurement of where my tripod was facing. And I might shift it a couple of degrees until when I was polar aligned and, that, and I could set that tripod to that degree that I found when taking everything down. When I initially set up and my mount was centered on the tripod with the tripod in the degree that I chose as being a good degree to start with, that my azimuth adjustment knobs were as close to even as possible. That then presets my tripod to be as close to in line with the North Celestial Pole as possible and also give me plenty of room for adjustment on my azimuth knobs. And with my compass, I found that 354 degrees puts me right there. The other thing that this does for me is it gets me closer to polar alignment to where I'm not making big adjustments. I'm just making small adjustments, which also speeds up the process. Now, the next thing to be mindful of is you want to preset the altitude adjustment on your mount. Now, how do you do that? Every mount has a degree marker on its altitude axis, okay? What latitude are you at? For example, I'm at latitude 33. So I'm gonna preset the altitude of my mount to 33 degrees. In fact, just a quick tip, it's easier to adjust your mount up rather than adjust it down. So what I do is I actually overshoot that by a couple of degrees. So I'll set my altitude to 31 degrees. So when I'm actually in the process of polar aligning, I can actually adjust up getting more accurate fine-tune adjustments. When you adjust down, the mount can get kind of jumpy and it's easier to overshoot. And the way you do that, tightening the rear adjustment knob will raise your mount or move it up. And on the flip side, tightening the front knob will lower your mount or move it down in altitude. So if you remember from my video of setting up Nina, the three-point polar alignment is located in plugins. You click on uh, available, three-point polar alignment, and hit install. Now I'm going to put a link to that video in the, in the description of this video so you can refer back to it. And then the next thing that you want to install and have running before you do this is plate solving. And ASTAP is the one that I use. It's very reliable. So go ahead and um, 
click on that. If you don't have ASTAP installed, please refer to the Setting Up Nina video as I go over how to install that. Now, before we get into the last section where we're actually using Nina's three-point polar alignment, I want you to be able to visualize the sky as a grid. If you take a look at this degree wheel, zero degrees will represent north, east is 90 degrees, south is 180 degrees, west is 270 degrees, and everything in between. When you're looking at the horizon, where the sky meets the ground is zero degrees, and directly overhead, or zenith, is 90 degrees, and everything in between. Now, this comes into play if you have obstacles in your way that you need to clear, such as, my house is in the way on the east, and in the west, I have trees. So you need to be able to put your telescope in a desired area that you want to be in. And having the sky visualized as a grid with the degrees in the proper place will help you input your altitude coordinates and azimuth coordinates so you can put your telescope in a predicted area that you want it to start in. So to use Nina's three-point polar alignment, make sure you have all of your uh, equipment connected that you're gonna be using. Now the first requirement for Nina's three-point polar alignment is that you're able to plate solve. So what you're gonna do is go to the options tab, plate solving, and make sure you have as tap uh, selected. Now as tap is the best uh, plate solving software that I have experience with. It's very reliable, very quick. And if you need help installing ASTAP, I'll have a link to my initial setup of Nina video in the description of this video. So if you need help installing ASTAP, make sure to check out that video. The second requirement for Nina is that you're in focus. So we're gonna to go to the imaging tab. What I do is I just take a quick three second exposure and just see where I'm at as far as uh, focus. As you can see, I'm pretty far out. So what I'm gonna do, and now remember, you can't just run an autofocus run here because we're not tracking, and we are also um, not polar aligned. So you're not gonna have good results with it. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to do a quick uh, focus here. We'll see where we're at. Make sure you allow your focuser time to settle. These will come back up if you're using an autofocuser. See how that's an X, and then once it's done settling, these will light up again. Okay, let's do one quick little push on the focuser. And there we go, that looks pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up three-point polar alignment, which is this little tab right over here. And the first thing is measure point distance. I find the best results is at 20 degrees. And what this means is your initial coordinates, Nina's gonna take a picture, plate solve, It'll move your measure point distance, in this case, 20 degrees. Take a picture, plate solve. And then it'll move 20 more degrees. Take a picture, plate solve, and then give you your error. Now, where do you start? If you have obstacles in the way, you need to make sure that you clear them. This is where it's important to think of the sky as a grid. So in other words, due north is going to be zero degrees, due east is going to be 90 degrees, due south is going to be 180 degrees, due west is going to be 270 degrees, and then back around the north. The horizon where the earth meets the sky is going to be zero degrees, directly overhead 
is going to be 90 degrees. So if I wanted to point northeast halfway up the sky, I'll set my altitude to 45 degrees and that'll put me halfway up the sky. So remember where the earth meets the sky is zero degrees directly overhead or zenith is 90 degrees. So halfway up is 45. Northeast, if north is zero degrees, due east is 90 degrees, 45 degrees on azimuth will put me at northeast. Now I have houses in the way in the northeast. So I have to be up a little bit in the sky. I just keep mine at 40 degrees up and 40 degrees from north. So this will put me roughly northeast, roughly halfway up the sky and clear the obstacles in my way. The other thing with this is I'm going to start at 40 degrees up take its first picture, move 20 degrees, which puts me at 60 degrees on the next picture, and then move 20 more degrees for a total of 80 degrees on the third and last picture. You do not want to cross meridian when you're polar aligning. So this puts me 20 degrees before meridian, therefore I'm good. So that's another reason why I put it here. Because if I put it at 45, it just gets me a little bit closer. I like to have a little bit of a buffer. The last part, time, is going to be exposure time. I generally run about four seconds. Now, your sky brightness um, will determine which is better. If you're getting some plate solved errors, try adjusting your time. Um, four seconds works good for mine. You're definitely um, more than welcome, and I would recommend just starting at four. Another thing is, remember, this is how long it's going to take to get your uh, adjustments, meaning every four seconds is when it's going to show me my new error after I make an adjustment. The lower this number, the quicker I'll get that. So let's go ahead and hit play. So now what's going to happen is the mount is going to settle. Always have a settle time, especially if you have a belt driven mount like the EQ6R Pro. A settle time allows the vibrations of those belts to uh, dissipate so they don't disturb your image. I have mine set at 15 seconds. And now it's going to go ahead and take its first picture. And then it'll plate solve it. And now it's going to move 20 degrees. So now it's going to its 60 degree mark because we started at 40 and now it's moving 20 degrees. It's going to go ahead and settle again. And then once it's done settling, it's going to take its next picture. It's going to plate solve it. And now we're moving to our last point, in this case, 80 degrees, because it's moving 20 degrees from the 60 degree mark. Now it's going to settle, take its uh, next exposure, and then you'll see the error pop up right over here. Now, as you can see, it wants me to move up uh, four hours and then east 25 minutes. Now, this is why I recommend uh, moving your altitude initially a little bit lower. It's easier to adjust up than it is down. You also want to start with your biggest number and always chase the biggest number. In this case, altitude is the biggest number, so I'm going to start there. If I bring this in far enough to where this is a bigger number, then I'll switch to adjusting my azimuth and then work my way in. The other thing is right here, initial polar alignment error is large. Correction phase will be unreliable. Please bring the mount closer to polar alignment and do another run to verify the result. 
So we're going to have to run this twice. So let's go ahead and make an adjustment here. So I'm going to move the mount up using my altitude knobs. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen my front knob and I'm going to tighten the back knob. Tightening the back knob is going to move my mount up. Tightening the front knob will move my mount down. So let's see where this goes. Another thing to keep in mind, if you're in the middle of an exposure when you make an adjustment, let it run a second exposure because it may not catch the entire movement and can throw you off. So we cut that in right about half. So let's keep going up since that number is the largest. Let's see where this brings us. Let's keep on going. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this to the end of this adjustment. Now, really quick, I am now further off on azimuth and notice how it wants me to move east. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten the knob on the east side. If it wanted me to move west, I'll tighten the knob on the west side of the pier. So let's go ahead and tighten the east knob. And notice how that brought me closer. So I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, this initial adjustment. And then we'll be right back. Okay. Now on this initial adjustment, I like to bring it within five minutes. So we're well within that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snug the knobs. I don't, I'm not gonna fully tighten them, I'm just gonna snug them. And this is the critical part. Remember, according to this message, we wanna run this again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit stop. Never ever loosen up your clutches and move the mount manually after you um, start slewing. Your encoders know the home position when you start. And if you loosen your clutches and move your mount manually, it won't know that that happened. And what'll happen is it'll think it's in one spot when in fact it's in another and it can cause a tripod position uh, collision and also very, very inaccurate go-to commands. All that we're gonna do here is just hit play again. And it's gonna bring the telescope back to our original um, coordinates that we set. In this case, in this example, 40 degrees altitude, 40 degrees azimuth. So now it's back in its uh, home spot where we started initially with three point polar alignment, 40 degrees altitude, 40 degrees azimuth. And it's gonna run the process all over again. So once it's done settling, now it's gonna take its exposure, it's gonna plate solve it, and it's gonna move 20 degrees, and we're just basically doing this again. Now, while this is running, the way I like to think about it is um, it, 
it goes to the initial spot that you set. It'll take a picture and plate solve. And then if the telescope is perfectly polar aligned, once it slews your set degrees, in this case, 20 degrees, it should be in a specific area of the sky. And when it's not in that specific area that it should be in, it has an error, meaning it has a, um, an error distance in this case shows us in arc minutes, hours, and seconds. And then once it gets to the third part, it can finish calculating that error and it gives you that uh, displayed on the screen. And then once it's done with the first one, it wants you to run a second time to confirm that error. In this case, you can see that we were close. Now I have done this where I run just one run and uh, according to PhD2, I was off by about 25 arc minutes. Now, when I run this twice, like you're seeing here, Nina and PhD2 agree to a very surprisingly um, accurate amount. In other words, this is a very reliable plate solving and um, polar alignment uh, program. So as, uh, as I'm talking, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this. As you can see, azimuth is further out and it wants me to move west. So I'm gonna actually tighten my west knob. I probably actually overshot it just now. Let's find out. On your second run, it gets very sensitive, very small movements make a big difference. As you can see, I overshot it. I'm actually not too unhappy with that. I'll explain why in a second. Let's go ahead and tighten the back knob to move us up a couple of arc minutes. And now we need to move down a little bit very small increments on this. Okay. Now, one thing I want to bring up, when I start getting close like this, I don't just completely loosen up the opposite side knob. What I'll do, so we'll take east for example, so I need to tighten that east knob. I only need a minute though, and it's very sensitive on the second run. So what I'm going to do is just ever so slightly loosen the west knob, and I'm going to tighten the east knob up against that so I can get my final torque on these. And I don't have to be terribly tight, but you do want them pretty snug. And by just ever so slightly loosening up the opposite side and then tightening the correct side, in other words, in this scenario, very slightly loosening up the west side knob and tightening the east side knob against it, you can see that I get very fine tuned adjustments out of this. And I can really dial this in. And there you go. That is how you do a Nina three-point polar alignment. And uh, I hope that you found this useful. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon, throw a comment in the comment section. Did you find this useful? Do you have any questions? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.